Welcome to our class of advanced public finance and uh, taxation, where we are continuing with our discussion of taxation of partnership. And specifically, in this case, we are looking at the retirement of a partner in the course of the year. We will illustrate the concept of the retirement of a partner in the course of the year by looking at a question of December 2 8. And we shall read through the question. The question reads as follows. Rima and Panda started a partnership business on 1st January 2007. However, Rima retired from the partnership on 30th June 2007 on health grounds. The business did not maintain proper books of accounts for the year ended the 1st December 2007. Panda has approached you with the following extracts and information to assist him determine the profit or loss for the year ending at the 1st December 2007. One, bank deposits during the year were as follows. Capital, Lima, 4 million. Panda, 6 million. Correction from debtors, 6.2 million. Balance from cash sales, 5.6 million. Two, bank withdrawals during the year were as follows. Amount paid to suppliers, 9.2 million. Expense, utility, 650,000. Rent for business, 620,000. And funds to, Rima, to Rima's wife, paid on 1st July 2007, 180,000. Three, all receipts from cash sales were banked, except for the following. 400,000 during the year, for day-to-day -day expenses, 800,000 drawn up to 30th June 2007, being Rima's salary. Ceilings 1.4 million drawn up to 30th June 2007, being Panda's salary. Four, gross profit margin was maintained at 20% throughout the year. Five, goods returned to suppliers amounted to shillings 240,000, while goods returned by customers amounted to shillings 174,000. Six, actual body debts amounted to shillings 264,000. Seven, as at 31st December 2007, amounts due to suppliers stood at shillings 7,250,000, while amounts due to debtors stood at shillings 1,080,000. 8. Cash discounts around to customers amounted to shillings 143,590. 9. Cash discounts received from suppliers amounted to shillings 1 million, no, 187,755. 10. <coughs> Capital allowances were agreed with the tax authority at shillings 180,000. 11. The partnership agreement providing that profit and losses were to be shared equally. So required a statement showing the adjusted taxable income or loss for each of the half years ended 30 June 2007 and that 1st December 2007. Assume, unless otherwise specified, that income and expenses accrued evenly throughout the year. Hint, first compute the annual gross profit. The annual gross profit. Now, we will go through the notes one by one, uh, analyzing or understanding what is required or what we need to understand from each of the notes. So note number one is talking about the bank deposits during the year. So here we have the amounts of capital, uh, uh, the, the corrections from debtors that were banked, and then we have balance from the cash sales. Now those amounts, some of them will help us to determine our total figure for sales when it comes to computing our total figure for sales. Remember, we were told that uh, uh, these partners had not kept a complete set of accounts. They had not maintained proper books of account. So they haven't prepared an income statement, as we can see. And therefore, ours is to organize this information into an income statement to arrive at the taxable income. In the income statement, we will require sales we will require sales. So part of the information on note number one 
is to assist us get the seals because we are told collections from the debtors that were banked, uh, balance from the cases and all that. Now, note number two is talking about uh, withdrawals during the year, and here we are talking amounts paid to suppliers, expense utilities, rent for the premises, and, and the funds to Rima's wife. Uh, that one <coughs> we may not be of so much use because once we determine our figure for sales and we have been told about note four, the gross profit margin was maintained at 20% throughout the year, then from there we will be able to determine our gross profit without need for computing our purchases. Then from number three, we are told all the receipts from the car sales were banked except for the following. So this will also assist us when we will be computing the figure for the sales, the figure for the sales. Then number four, it will assist us again, get our figure for gross profit. And number five, also will assist us in getting our sales. So basically, the notes are straightforward. We don't have a lot of workings from our notes. So we will go straight into the first part of our working. And in this case, our working number one is going to entail the computation of our figure for total sales. So our working number one, so W1 will be total, total sales, total sales. Now total sales in a business is normally given by cash sales. Some sales will be in cash, so cash sales plus credit sales. It's normal for businesses to sell in cash and also sell on credit. So for us to know the total sales throughout the year, we add up the two, the ones that we sold in cash and the ones that were sold on credit. So in this case, we have to know, can we be able to get, first of all, uh, we can start with getting our credit sales. So uh, A of this part can be, we get the, the credit sales, the credit sales. Now, how do we get the credit sales in this particular case. The credit sales will be obtained by drawing a creditor's, um, uh, drawing a debtor's control account, whereby the balancing figure will give us the credit sales after feeding the known information. So we can have uh, an, a, a, T, a T account, and in this account we shall have the debtor's control, the debtor's control account. In this, account for the debtor's control account, we need to start with uh, the opening balance. That is uh, the balance brought down, the balance brought down of debtors. So um, we are told that these people started their business on 1st January 2007. So having begun their business on 1st January 2007, and we are computing the taxable income for the 12 months, that is from January to December, it means they did not have balances of debtors at the beginning of the year. So the balance brought down for these debtors is nil. Balance brought down is nil because they have just begun, they began their business in January. So in this account, we will check the figures, the, the, the information that affects this debtors control account. And from note number one, where we have bank deposits during the year, we are told that uh, there were some corrections from debtors. This correction from the debtors, we call them receipts from debtors. So receipts from debtors, or we can see we use the same one, collection from debtors. This correction from debtors amounts to 5.6 million, 5.6 million. Then in note number two, note number two, is not affecting our debtors control account because it has nothing to do with the customers or sales. Number three, it's nothing to do with our, our debtors because from number three, we are told these were cash sales. So these are not sales that had been done in credit. All of them were cash sales. So number three does not affect our debtors control account. So our debtors control account is affected by transactions that were on credit. So number four, number four is not affecting our debtors control account. Then number five is talking about customers. Customers returned goods. So these goods that were returned to the customers affects our debtors' balances. And uh, since our sales figure is normally debited in this account, 
any returns of goods that had been sold to the customers will be posted on the credit side of this account. So in this case, we are told the amounts that the goods that were returned amounted to 174. So we call them returns inwards. Returns inwards. Inwards because it is the customers now bringing goods back to us. So this is 174 thousands. So 174 thousands is returned to us. Then number six is talking about the bad debts. Remember bad debts again arise. How do they arise? Some customers are unable to pay. Who are these customers? The customers who had purchased on credit. The customers who had purchased on credit are our debtors. So in this case, we have bad debts. Bad debts and this amounts to 264,000. 264,000. That one also is credited in that account because our sales figure will be on the other side. Then moving on to note number seven. Number seven is talking about uh, uh, the, the balancing figure. The balancing figure, and it's specifically here, we are interested with the balancing figure of debtors. And we are told that uh, as of that first December 2007, amounts due to suppliers stood at 7,250,000, 7, that is for creditors, where amounts due to debtors stood at 1,080,000. So that is a closing figure of our debtors. We will put that one as we proceed because it will affect this account. Then we note number eight is talking about discounts. So the discounts which affects this account is the discount allowed. And number eight, we are told cash discounts were around to customers amounting to 143,590. These discounts allowed to customers also reduce our figure for debtors. And so reduction of debtors being an asset is normally a credit entry. So reduction in debtors is credited in the account. So we have discount allowed. Discount allowed. That is credited to this account, 143,590. 590, that is discount allowed to the customers. Then uh, note number nine is talking about discount received. That has nothing to do with the debtors. It's an item of uh, purchases. Then uh, uh, capital allowances that does not affect that account. And uh, then uh, number 11. So those are the figures or the amounts that affect this account. And finally, we put the closing balance. Since we had an opening balance, which was nil, we also have to show the closing balance. In this case, the closing balance, we are told, is a million and eight thousand. This is a debit balance, and so we have our balance now carried down. The ca balance carried down, that's at the end of the year, which is one million and eight thousand. So we shall take now the total, the total of that, which we shall also show on the other side. So we take the total. 5.6 million, we earned 174,000, we add 264,000, we earned 143,590, we earned 1 million and 80,000, giving us 7 million to 161,590. 7,261,590. That amount is also indicated on the other side. 7,261,590. On the debit side, we have not posted any amount. So this will be our figure of credit sales. So 7,261,590. 590 is our balancing figure in that account, which gives us the credit sales. Now, for one to be able to draw this account, one needs to remember the double entry rules, and specifically here, the ones for drawing the debtor's control account. So one has to remember the double entry rules to be able to draw this account uh, uh, for debtor's control account, which gives us the figure of our credit sales. So that forms our credit sales. Then. Part B, 
would be now since our, our, our expression here says total sales, car sales plus credit sales. So already that is known, we have that. So what we don't know therefore is the car sales. So we get the cars, the cars sales. We need to know what amount is our car sales. Now the amount of car sales, we, 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 we have uh, note number three. We need to know all our car sales that were there. Now we have bank deposits during the year. From the bank deposit during the year, we are told what? There were balance from cash sales that were banked. So first of all, banked amount. We start with bank. Amount that went to the bank. How much did we take to the bank? 6.2 million. That is from note number one. 6.2 million was taken to the bank. Then we need to know the amount that was not banked. Remember all the sales ordinarily should end up to the bank, but in this case some sales were not banked for one reason or the other.